Welcome to Table Talk, a place for honest conversations and getting to meet friends. I'm Betsy Thompson here with the wonderful Bill Cole. Bill, you're just one of those people everybody loves. Well, they do. Perhaps so. <laughs> Listen, I was with a group of ladies at our Beside training not too long ago, and your sweet wife was there, mm -hmm. and she was talking and sharing and doing her amazing things that she does, mm -hmm. and she said, y'all know. That silver fox up there, that's my husband. <laughs> and I was like, I adore that you're like, of course she said that. Yes, yeah. and she means it with all that she is. She loves you so much. Yeah, well, I love her. She uh, still thinks I'm sexy when I vacuum. Listen, <laughs> listen, there's tons of women right now going, uh-huh, yes, if my husband would vacuum, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she is precious. And you really, really, truly, the other day in service, um, Levi, Pastor Levi got up and he said, if I can sing like Bill Cole when I get to heaven that would just be awesome um, and there are there there nice. are certain Sundays when I go good night I forget sometimes how good a singer you are well, I mean you're obviously you're a really good singer but you really you have you have a beautiful voice and you well, do such a good job thank you I'm hanging on yeah you do a great job <laughs> I'm hanging on. people just uh, adore I how long have you been at Sagemont 36 years 36 last, years. last February wow yeah. I was just a, a babe. I was yeah. just, I'm just kidding. Yes, me too. <laughs> right? I know. How I was old not were a, you? I was 30. I had just turned 30. 30. Yes, when I came That's here. That's awesome. I had brown hair and two babies and <laughs> two one on the way. One on the way. And JJ was born and uh, now Man. he's 35. He'll, he'll be 36. And yeah. Italian. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, it's in, it's people like you that I stop and think about what you've gotten to witness God do at Sagemont mm -hmm. in all these years. To back when y'all came, I guess you were in the HRA. Uh, HRA, yes, yes, we were. okay. That's but correct. then the gym, you were here when the gym opened, I guess. Oh no, the no, gym no, was no. first, and then the HRA gym was okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually used to travel in okay. evangelism and singing, and I actually came to Sagemont Church. When they met in the gym. Really? Yes. That's cool. And sang a concert there. Okay. That's uh, really fun. Yeah. it's it's. It, I have fond memories That's of really that. Cool. And, of course, John Morgan. Yeah. Getting those, to do all the yeah, things. Yeah. We saw so many yeah. tremendous days. Really cool really. stuff. Really, really fun stuff. Yeah, and I love that you are still here and getting to see what God's doing now. Because mm -hmm. I will tell people, because I was thinking about this now and I was going to talk to you today. I wish everyone could stand on the stage and watch or stand in the front and watch when people come down to pray mm -hmm. or when people come down to say, I just accepted the Lord. Like mm -hmm. it is so cool to get to be witness yeah. to people getting up out of their seats and coming down. So we have long wanted to do a moment like that in yeah. our services to have a come forward prayer time and really just Pray yeah, with people yes. about any number of things. Uh, we just, and sort of having the prayer emphasis mm -hmm. that we began back last fall mm -hmm. and into this year, you know, helped us really determine to do a few things. Yep. And that was one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just so beautiful it because, um, you know, it, 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 it liberates people to realize that, you know, we can move around and, and mm -hmm. function as a body and share our really desperately hard yes. moments. And then, like yes. yesterday, share people that we we're praying for That's to right. come to Christ so mm -hmm. we can have people, you know, intercede. Yeah. And um, it's just a really big thing. And I love people it. share weighty things in those they moments. Do. And we even had uh, one lady come to Christ. During, During the prayer, prayer time, time just that's a right. very few weeks ago. Yeah. So, which is great. Uh, it's, I know it's wonderful. whenever somebody comes down and I'm praying with them and get the honor of someone coming and sharing with me to say, mm -hmm. will you just pray with me? Pray. And then I open my eyes and every person is praying with somebody and there's lines of people just kneeling at the yeah. altar. I'm like, thank you, yes. Lord. This is just beautiful. It is. It makes, I stand up there and I'm sort of engineering the whole thing in my mind. Like, you need to walk over there. You, you right. So it stresses me out sometimes. Right. I don't want you to wait too long to You're be right. prayed for. Don't but it is wait. so yeah. sweet. It, it is so is. good. It is just um, such a healthy, beautiful thing. It really is. And um, and I think Lee and Pastor Levi said this that um, 
because uh, I asked him, I said, do you think it prohibits people from later on in the service maybe walking forward mm. the invitation? If, is it a problem? He said, no, no, no. I think it helps them. Yeah. It, feel, it doesn't feel as daunting to be, oh, Correct. we're walking to the front. It's no, this is something we do. It's a very normal thing to do, mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. around and to interact. And it's yeah. just, oh, it's been such a gift. Really. I love it. I love it so much. Um, one of the big reasons I asked you specifically to come and do Table Talk with me after Easter mm -hmm. was because leading into Easter, we have been praying for the one see, saying, guys, who is that person to come to know the Lord? Um, so many people mm -hmm. coming to know Jesus in our worship services and during the week and all the things. And so often we go, that's awesome. And one thing we as a church are really trying to be really good about is go, okay, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, yes to the Lord. Right. What's the next step? And, um, I asked you specifically a couple of reasons. One, um, I don't know if you remember this, but years ago, um, I got you this little plaque. And I don't know if it's still in your office or not. This little thing I bought for you. And I think, I can't remember exactly what it said, but something along the lines of, I remember the day. Yes. Because you yes. are so good when you are on the stage, you're like, and you say the day, I can't remember the date, but you will, you're like, it was this day and I remember and like it is so real and fresh to you, even though it was mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important for all of us to say, accepting Jesus, walking into a relationship with him is, I mean, y'all, it's death to life, right? It's mm -hmm. death to life. And it does change everything about us. And I love that you are so great about owning that in your life and shouting it from the rooftops and saying, I remember mm -hmm. when this happened. And I wanted you to share a little bit because I think your story is not unique in the grand scheme of things, but it's interesting in that you were doing evangelism, singing it, uh, evangelism stuff and oh, work doing all the things yeah. and then came into an, a relationship with correct. Jesus. Yeah. Share a little bit, just some people might know your story, some people not, not, might not, but share a little bit about that. So I was raised in a Baptist church from um, the time I was born. Mm -hmm. And um, I had heard the gospel, and of course I went to Sunday school and did all the things in high school and mm -hmm. junior high. And, um. And I just really never had peace. I had had a come down invitation kind of experience mm -hmm. as a child of all things with my father, who mm -hmm. is not a churchgoer at all. Wow. I can't even remember why he was there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I went down. I just remember lots and lots of tears. It was mm -hmm. a very emotional thing. Um, and then I was baptized uh, or whatever you would want to call yeah. not really being uh, immersed after right. true salvation, but I just never had peace. Mm. And so, but I knew I, it's a, it's kind of convoluted because I really felt and sensed a call to do what I was doing. I don't right. think I really missed it. Uh, but I started traveling with my brother-in-law and and his wife, and then Laura came to sing with us mm -hmm. too. And we would go we'd do revivals and concerts and right. con you know all sorts of things. It's back when people did this; they don't yeah. do it like that much anymore. But um, so we had a revival in our church, uh, the Glenview Baptist Church, back in 1982. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Taylor was the preacher, just a, sort of an old time, really incredible mm -hmm. uh, preacher. And and I mean the power of God just fell in yeah. this meeting. And our one of the first decisions that happened on the Sunday morning that we started this revival was our pastor, he just left the room. Oh, wow. During the invitation. Then he came back in a few moments later and he told everybody, I've never been baptized, scripturally baptized. Wow. He had been converted. He became mm -hmm. a Christian, a mm -hmm. disciple of Christ later and never really followed it up with a really right. another you know, baptism mm -hmm. shows truth. And then the, the minister of music got saved 
in this service. Wow. And then one of the head deacons gets set. Wow. And it's just wow. all these things are happening mm-hmm. and our church is just Right. Uh, you know, just really aghast at like, mm-hmm. what is happening? But it was a good thing. Yeah. And it, it was the just the glory and the power of God. Awesome. So here's what would happen. You would, and of course, I'm traveling in between a little bit. So this was supposed to be a four-day revival. Right. It went three weeks. Oh, my word. Okay. So I'm kind of in and out because right. I'm having to travel some. And just hearing about it, and yeah. we're talking about it, and it's just, just a thing. And it's just really starting to just... Uh, yeah, settle in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, conviction and just such a lack of peace. And so we got home um, on a Saturday or a Friday or sometime. But I went to church. Laura was not feeling good, so I went by myself. Right. And it was the kind of thing where you really didn't want to show up with sin in your life because yeah. nobody wanted to mess this up. Mm. So it was a very prayerful thing. Mm-hmm. So I went to the church. I have no idea the message. I just knew I needed to get saved. Wow. So as soon as the invitation was given, you know, I went down and I actually spoke with and prayed with one of the deacons who had gotten saved okay, cool. a, a few days cool. earlier. And we used to have these little rooms behind the choir and piano okay. little areas. And so we were just back in a closet. Yeah. And it was May the 2nd, 1982. I do remember the day. Mm-hmm. Now, let me say this. Many people don't remember the day. Absolutely. And that's totally great. That's okay. Just as long as you know you belong to that's Jesus. Right. That's yep. the thing. Yep. I, I know some incredibly devoted, love, loving followers of Jesus who they don't know. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's not about the day. Right. It's about the fact that Absolutely. he did save me mm-hmm. and um, changed my life. I went home and told Laura. Yeah. And we wept. Yeah. And then we, uh, because she knew. Yeah. And so we went and did a concert that night in Louisiana. We had to leave. Okay. And um, I shared my testimony. Yeah. And literally, you know, 12, 13, 14 people came to Christ that night because um, they, too, were like me. They were longtime churchgoers, but... They were professors, but they didn't have right. the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they weren't real disciples. Mm-hmm. So um, it's still yep. the greatest day of my life. Right. What the Lord did for me. It's beautiful. That's amazing. And you know. and this hearing you, um, this is why I want people to hear you. Because you it's you know it's completely the lord it's not anything that you did it's completely him you give all honor and glory to him and i think there are so many people walking around struggling with that same thing mm-hmm. going but i've been in church my whole life or i was baptized when i was 7 or you know and they know the things right they have all yeah, the head knowledge right. and they maybe in a lot of even feel the mm-hmm. thing on sunday morning the but it's it's the peace it's the the confidence in the knowledge. And um, and I just so think it's awesome for one, because I think there is such a vulnerability in you sharing, because I think so many people are like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And it's just yeah. that that pride thing, that vulnerability thing, yeah. setting that aside. Yeah. So. Um, so change. So this is not a biblical principle by any means, but real change doesn't, you don't make a decision to make a real change unless your present circumstances get to the point where mm. they're painful enough. That's, that's how you just through life yeah. decide to make changes in your life change. because the pain of your present circumstances mm. finally becomes untenable. So it was a thing because prior to, you know, I'd been... You know, I used to sing. I mean, I'm singing in churches yes, every week. Right. And I'm, you know, professing Christ right. and I'm doing church things and saying Jesus things. Yeah. And I know the language and I, mm-hmm. you know, I've been raised in it. And so I'm having to get up in front of my team to say, I'm really not on the team. Right. But I want to be. Yes. And I think what people don't understand is, 
everybody's happy about that. Yes. There's nobody that really is going to say, well, you big old hypocrite. Right. Yeah, yeah that's you, not the response. You think that, but right. that is the right. evil one who mm-hmm. would like come to say, well, how in the world could you like embarrass Absolutely. your family? Yeah. How could you? You know, it's this, yes. it's, a, it's along the same lines and, and even more difficult for someone who is like of another faith who has mm-hmm. to make the kind of decision. Yeah. I mean, it's not so uh, hypocritical or embarrassing, but it is a hard decision. Yeah. Uh, you're just afraid you're going to lose everything in this mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. But the point of it all is it's better to lose everything in this life, life than to lose your life to an eternity in hell. That's right. And so you you just come to the place where there's such conviction of sin mm-hmm. and you just want to be able to put your head on the mm-hmm. pillow at night and yeah. say, Lord, it is so good to be yours. That's right. Today was not a perfect day. I'm far from perfect, but you are perfect, and it is so good to rest in you. Yeah. I love that, and I love that you and I can confidently say Sagemont is a place where we're just going to celebrate with you. Yes. We're going to celebrate. We are going to celebrate with you. You know, however you are coming, please come. We will celebrate with you. Yes. And it is, um, I was talking with. Pastor Levi just today, and we were talking about just the invitation time that mm-hmm. we haven't had a come forward invitation for quite a while. Right. And when he came, yeah. now we do one. Right. Um, but it feels so comfortable. It does. I think it's a very, um, if I were to need Jesus, I would want to have the environment mm-hmm. that we have here yeah. that is so loving and yes. with a pastor who literally almost makes a an arrangement with you before to say, yes. are you looking at me? I, listen. Come to Jesus. When he's saying, are you, you shake your head at me. If you're, I'm like, in a room of thousands of people, mm. he is making a personal connection yes. with you. Correct. I've never seen anybody do it that way. Yes. And I God think it's so great. All over that. Yes. He is, he is. So I think what happens is um, in the Lord... There's trust, yeah. you know, and, and, and with him. And so I'm not just trying to sing his praises, but no. but it yeah. is really good. Yeah, it's and been really. And the Lord really. has just really been um, just doing such beautiful things. It's been really exciting. Yeah. And I think now kind of coming off Easter or coming out of the Easter season, um, Sagemont and our people, hopefully what you watching, but I know as a staff, we really are looking at, okay, what's next steps? We have to be so mm-hmm. purposeful because we don't want anybody anybody to come and say, I'm a new creation in Christ. We celebrate with you and then you get crickets from us right. because that's the first part. There's this whole, you know, we're still living. We still get up and breathe. There's a sanctification process. We have to learn the, the disciplines of having a healthy, good relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus mm-hmm. and uh, all that that entails and the promises that are so good and true. Um, as a church, we want to come alongside and continue, Correct. right? And yes. provide those next steps. And so I was wondering, even with you thinking back to that May how did your life change? What looked different? Did things look different? Did you just, was it how you responded to things? So because I had played the game yes. of church, probably the outward to my life was not as dramatically different sure. as the as the inside of my life. Right, the motivation as to why you Correct. were doing the things. Yes, so mm-hmm. because I knew the lingo and most of my sins were probably in private mm-hmm. at the time, as mm-hmm. most are all the time. Right. Um, but what changed was my want to do the things of God, mm-hmm. like reading the Bible. Yeah. It it I can't say that I totally understood. I still don't. I have to use commentaries. Absolutely. As does anybody mm-hmm. who really wants to study and learn. But um, I changed from the inside, and I loved to do the things of God. I love to be with the people of God. Mm-hmm. I love to hear words of testimony and lives being changed. I love to hear, you know, just really victorious stories. I love right. to hear anything having to do with following and being a disciple. Mm-hmm. Of Christ, that's what is the big uh, was the big change yeah, in me. Absolutely, um, it's just 
altogether different. Yeah. You know, when you're so it's like we don't do peace. I tell this to people mm-hmm. quite often, uh, people who are troubled. So people look for peace in a lot of places, but what they don't realize is you can do calm and still mm-hmm. and quiet. Mm-hmm. Anybody can do that. Okay. And I did that before. Okay. But you can't do from the inside out peace. We can do it from the outside in peace. Okay. And this is what man tries mm-hmm. to substitute for God's peace. Right. The Lord says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Mm. So it's different. So the peace he gives is, is planted through our salvation and, of course, the Holy Spirit. And, mm-hmm. and then he begins to mm-hmm. gr- grow in us. And first of all, he plants this desire to be his, but he plants in us this really settled feeling and hope for eternity. Not just a feeling, but, but yeah. our faith and belief in God's word that, that says we are mm-hmm. his, whosoever will may call upon the name of the Lord. Right. And so... It, for me, that that's that was what it was. It was more of an inside job. Yeah. <laughs> I love that because I think so often we do. We look at people walking through hard things and say, how are they walking through that with peace? How mm-hmm. are they walking through that and not just losing it? You exactly. Know? And, 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 like, and we don't get some kinds of peace. I, I don't. I think there's different kinds mm-hmm. for sure. But we don't get that troubling peace that passes understanding. Yeah. I I really believe until we need it. It's grace. Yes. It's what it is. It's grace. So there's saving grace, but then there's grace for living Mm -hmm. that I believe the Lord gives us, especially like when we have to say goodbye to our loved ones and deal with, you know, just horrible Mm -hmm. trauma like that. Yeah. And having that beautiful peace that comes from Mm -hmm. him. I love that. So I think even for those maybe that are listening and kind of going, I'm not sure where I'm at. I would say if... Uh, maybe a little red flag, not always, but maybe a little, is if you're constantly running around trying to find peace, that m- you might need to sit down with the Lord and go, okay, mm-hmm. I yeah. need you to show me this, or maybe where you need to, maybe I don't have that relationship yet. And I've been doing the, the church yeah. thing, and I've been doing the stuff, but man, if you're running around trying to find peace on your own. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. You can't do it's it. It's impossible. And it's one of those things that you tr- you want to explain to somebody what it is, what it really, when you're walking in that peace, it's hard to explain to somebody. Yes, but there there is clarity when mm-hmm. when you become his disciple. So so to the the prayer that everyone is led to pray, it is not a bad thing. It is a good thing. It's always good to pray. And sure. and especially for people that don't know how to pray. Right. Never heard of it. But never the done requirements it. Yep. for salvation are belief and repentance. Mm-hmm. So if you have made some sort of a decision to be his or if you've what I believe are called by the spirit mm-hmm. and given the faith to become his then you are um, given his salvation. At the time of your repentance and repenting, you certainly right. know is turning from this way of going and then right. 180 degrees, yep. I'm going to go this way. way. I'm going to leave behind my old life. I'm going to turn this way and with belief, mm-hmm. with faith, with trust. And it is all a God thing. Yep. It is all the Lord Jesus. I mean, how do you have faith? I don't know how you have faith. The Lord gives you Mm -hmm. the faith for salvation because he beckons you. He calls you through his spirit. So there is no just like, oh, I think I'll just get saved today. Right. So you can't get saved apart from the gospel. Mm -hmm. So the gospel, the good news, and then there must be repentance. So if you have not repented, if, if there's, here's the thing. If you've never changed. Yes. I love that. If you've never changed. There used to be an old song we would sing called Stirred, but not changed. Mm. So it, it was all about being a part of something mm-hmm. and, it, and you feel the effects of it. You feel the conviction of sin and yet mm. you've never really changed, changed because okay. you haven't repented and yeah. believed. Yeah. That's um, awesome. It's, it's really... Good. And then you just trust God's word. Yeah. 
because the feels, you like to say the feels. The feels. Yeah. Yep. The feelings, I think, are wonderful. Sure. We are this trichotomy, you know, person. We're physical, we're an emotional, we're spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so feelings are a big, big part of who we are. But when it comes to our salvation, we don't base it on our feelings. We base it on God's word and that we trust him. That's right. And we trust him. Yep. We're saying, Lord, I'm all in. That's right. I'm all in. Here's everything I have. I'm going to trust you. Yep. And and here's my life. I repent of what I have been. Yeah. I want to become yours. And, uh, and so that's it. That's the way it starts. I love it. But there has to be change. change. I love that. Change. Uh, uh, inside. Now, there's a growth. You know, that's justification. That's just as if I'd right. never sinned. Yeah. That's the way I always heard that's it That's cute. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So if someone were to come to you and say, oh. okay, I have, I'm making a change. I, mm -hmm. I have made a change. Salvation. I know that I know that I know. And now my next steps, what other changes or what other things should I be looking for? What would you say to someone that really is walking into maybe a brand new relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody's had a relationship with Jesus, but they're like, I've got to make some changes mm -hmm. in how I'm living that relationship out. Yeah. What are some of those things that you would say, hey, these are some great next steps? Okay. So I'm a, I, when I go somewhere I've never been before, yeah. I'm a trip advisor guy. Okay. So, yeah. Have you ever seen the website yes, called TripAdvisor? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, if you go on TripAdvisor, say you want to make a trip right. to a, a place you've never yeah. been in the country. And so, you go on okay. TripAdvisor and it tells you the 10 best restaurants, yes. the 10 hotels, you know, gives you all. Uh -huh. So, you need a TripAdvisor. Okay. I really believe this. And so, you want to, first of all, you want to, you want to learn about Jesus. Okay. So you need you need a growth path there mm -hmm. to learn about Jesus. Well, His Word is how He speaks to us yeah. through His Word, the daily reading of His Word. We have had uh, Stuart teach us recently just about a very simple daily routine to just uh, start your day. You know, to 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 pray and say, Lord, good morning. I need your help today. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for my life. And then you take the Word of God and you can open it in some sort of systematic way. I mean, if you have a Bible study or a friend who wants right. to give you maybe the Gospel of John is where yep. a lot of people start compel there, us read. to start because mm -hmm. it's very beautiful, simple. Yes. Of the most, I, I guess the most uh, available to us you yep. know, who are younger in mm -hmm. our faith. But uh, you, you could also just systematically read a psalm. So mm -hmm. it's the first of the month, and you can read Psalm 1. Right. Or a proverb mm -hmm. is a good one, too. But mm -hmm. I think a psalm is probably a little bit mm -hmm. more applicable. But we, and so we read, and even Levi has said this, I read until I, I, I sense the Lord is speaking to I me. I love that he says that, yeah. And then, and then you take uh, just a bit of journaling and mm -hmm. add to it, and you say, Lord, here's what I think you're speaking to me, to me about. Mm -hmm. So you write it down, and then you thank him for it, and you can, you know, talk to him about right. it a little bit, and then you tell someone. Yes. Then you tell someone. Now, this is just a little thing. This is like not the most difficult thing in the world, but it's a changer. Yeah. So if you can start to make and see the Lord changing you a little bit every mm -hmm. day, you know, over over time, it'll be You're gonna significant yeah. growth. I think that's so great because so often I think people think, oh, I've got to go get a seminary degree. Or I've yeah. got to memorize books and books of the mm -hmm. Bible or before I am whatever, you know, blank, blank, blank. Right. And I love that it is... Listen, just open up God's Word. Yes, just start somewhere. Yeah. Start somewhere. And, and you don't even have to understand everything right. that you are reading because... Uh, I do not. Sure. Uh, I do not understand yeah. much. And I have, you know, books that I have yeah. that help me. And Absolutely. I have apps that I use, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But besides just opening his word, then I would encourage you that you need a community mm -hmm. to help you. Yeah. Who, like Sagemont, we have amazing growth opportunities yeah. and 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 will put you in the process of becoming like Jesus. It's called sanct being sanctified. Yes. So you've been justified mm -hmm. and you've been sanctified. Now, being sanctified is a process. Yep. There is no end That's game right. to sanctification. Yep. That's one of the difficulties 
for me sometimes. It's like, ugh, I, I need to get somewhere. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a conqueror. Right. <clears throat> and, but there is no end game right. as long as I'm walking this earth to yep. be sanctified. And mm-hmm. so we, we sometimes put too much on ourselves yeah. to become too much too fast and, and to think it's up to us. Yes. So what we, I think, need to understand is in these relationships we have at church, and all this relates to me to the whole TripAdvisor thing, because there's very mature people in churches, great, good, godly Mm -hmm. teachers, Mm -hmm. uh, even besides Pastor Levi. Absolutely. And so we we find mentors. We have ministries, Mm -hmm. or beside ministry, with men and women Mm -hmm. that have more mature believers that can help us walk in our faith, help us grow in our faith. And we're about to start a process in our church of of growing Mm -hmm. in smaller groups beyond the the connect groups. So this is a really wonderful opportunity to to have a little bit of one-on-one with a more spiritual believer. So I do believe it is a great thing to find someone uh, who's been there also. Absolutely. A real live flesh person who is humble and real and Mm -hmm. who can walk with us in the faith, who can help us. And it's just so good. It is. It's important that a new believer start growing. Yes. Because if you if you sure. do not grow, you will you will have trouble with your Absolutely. with your faith. You will have trouble reckoning that mm-hmm. it was a real thing to you. So it's Truth. important that you get on a growth mm-hmm. path for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I you know, if you are someone that's coming to worship and you're you've gotten to where you're consistently coming to worship, mm-hmm. man, take the next step. Look for a connect group. Look for a Bible study. Yes. Get plugged in. Find people yes. that are going to say, hey, you weren't at church on Sunday or, hey, how is your prayer life going? Or, hey, what book are, that accountability that's going to happen? Yes. Like do the next thing wherever you're at. Mm-hmm. And just keep taking those next steps to go a little bit deeper and a little bit yeah. deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And those are evidence of your faith, and you love to do those things. When you start growing and learning, you'll get really yep. juiced. Yeah. You'll get so excited. You'll do the uncomfortable thing and be willing to be uncomfortable so that you will grow. Because you're like, I'm willing to be uncomfortable because I want to keep growing. Yeah, and it's it's a new discipline. Like, yeah. uh, and, that, you know, some people, I would tell you, would probably, you know, people have formulas for everything, even Christians. Yeah. And... So I don't have a quiet time every morning. I don't. Uh, If I told you that would be a big fat lie, I don't. But I read God's word regularly. Mm -hmm. I study God's word. I I read books by Christians. I'm, uh, you know, I immerse myself in Mm -hmm. all all manner of things. But nothing's more important than God's word. But if your quiet time does not work for you in the morning, then you can sure, you know, go to God in the evening or you know find those times. Yep. But you also need to. Really make sure that you find a church. Yes. It's really important to be part of a community because you have gifts mm-hmm. also that are yes. going to emerge in your life yep. as you grow. And you're going to find that, you know, I'm pretty good at uh, exhorting people, right. encouraging people. Mm-hmm. And I work so well with young people. So this this could be a really great avenue for yeah. service for you. Absolutely. A very rich thing. Or, or you find out that I love to share the gospel with people. Mm-hmm. And so we have... Uh, all kinds of opportunities and mission opportunities. And and you can even do that in your own neighborhood. You can exercise your gift in that way. But there's there's just so many beautiful gifts that the Lord gives Mm -hmm. us. But but it is so important um, that you begin to read God's Word because it is the living Word of God. It will change you. It is not just black ink on white paper. It is not... Um, it is not a novel to be read and enjoyed and mm-hmm. set on the shelf and then right. said, yeah, I read that once. It was right. good. No, no, it is your it is your avenue to God's uh, voice. Mm-hmm. It's how I he speaks that. to us. And mm-hmm. he said and we, we you know, we've been praying yes. uh, Psalm 116. My ears inclined yes. to you. Therefore, you can call upon me as long as you live. Well, it's not just about his ear. It's about his posture. Yeah. I mean, he's lowered himself. And I think you can say it in a way that he has present, he's given us mm-hmm. his word. Yeah. He's brought himself down to where mm-hmm. we are. 
in such a, you know, he became lowly, he took on the form of man mm-hmm. um, to, to buy for us heaven. And, and he's also given us in a way that is so accessible, his word. Yes. So if you want to be like somebody, then you got to get to know, him. know what they yes. do. But it is even better because you not only get to know about him, but you get to know him. him. Yeah, that. that's it's, awesome. It's a really that's great. Advent, it's an adventure, is it what is. it is. It is really an adventure. It is. So I, when I was growing up, my youth pastor used to say, "Seeing God in every moment of life is the greatest adventure there is." Mm. Love that. And I, I never really yeah. understood the depth of that until yeah. you know I, I grew. But mm-hmm. it is so true. It is so true. And as the seasons come, then you, having grown, will become um, seasoned and knowledgeable mm-hmm. and, and um, battle-scarred and right. all the things yep. that you get. But you'll be able to share a story like none other. Absolutely. Your testimony only gets richer and richer. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Y'all, it, I think it's so good because if you are someone that's like, I did, I just— began a relationship with Jesus. Next step, start, read his word, jump into his word. If you are someone that's been walking with the Lord for a long time and you're like, I know I need to take next steps, read his word. Mm-hmm. That's like, y'all, I mean, that's the thing. Get into his word, know him more because he's constantly revealing himself to mm-hmm. us and we're never going to know it all. And so yes. keep yeah. reading his word. That's a big deal. Yeah. This sanctification thing. I, I was listening to, I have this, um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a blog, and, okay. and it's like there's this uh, voice that speaks to you like the Holy Spirit speaking okay. to you, reading God's word. Okay. Uh-huh. But they were teasing on sanctification, and I was just whew, so struggling, um, just frustrated with a portion of my life, and 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 there, this study was saying you being sanctified, you are mine. I love you. You're just accepted. Um, you're never going to get there this side of glorification. Yeah. So that's the other, right. that's the other cation. So there's being justified, mm-hmm. coming to become a Christian, become right. a Christian, yep. a disciple of Christ. And then there's sanctification, being made to look and act and be more like him, mm-hmm. this process of growing. And right. then there's glorification. Right. Now that's the end game. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that's the yeah. heaven part. <laughs> that's going to be good. Yeah. Where we, we are with him, mm-hmm. we see him. Uh, yep. With our new eyes, and uh, it will be good. It's going to be good. It, it will be so good. It's yeah. going to be good. And we keep encouraging each other. Sanctification yes. is a really good thing. Yes. And when we start going, oh, my goodness, I'm still working on this, mm-hmm. have people around you go, yep, and keep doing it. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's I right. love that. We need encouragement. That's right. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, it's been I always my pleasure. love when you come to hang you're, out. You're just very kind to you're, have me. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're so fun. And you do, you are so, I think you're one of these, you are so fun, but there is a depth to you that every once in a while we get to dig into. And I think we did today. And wow. so I so appreciate you sharing with us. And y'all, when you see Bill, I know sometimes it's from a distance. Pray for Bill, pray for Lori, pray for their family. Come up and tell them thank you. Send them a little card just to tell them thanks so much. We appreciate so much of what you do to help us um, enter into um, just getting to visit with the Lord on Sunday mornings. It's a beautiful thing. My pleasure. You do an amazing job. So, y'all. Take your next step. Do the thing. We're here cheering for you, ready to come alongside you, help you do. Do the next thing. Take that next step. If you need something from us, please reach out to us. We would love to walk alongside you as you walk through the sanctification process with Jesus. So thanks for hanging out today. Thank you, Bill, for hanging out. And we will see you next time on Table Talk.